Hello, I'm Judy Jackson. I'm going to be showing you today how to make a Portuguese dessert called feijoadas. When I was a child, my mother used to be talking about them and I often heard her say feijoadas and I thought they were made of fish. So possibly I got the wrong impression. What I didn't know was what they really were. And here they are, coils of pastry fried in oil. And you can see what they're like. These are quite small ones. You can also make them larger when they're slightly more wine looking. But whichever ones you choose, both of them, they need to be soaked in a syrup. And here are the two alternative ones that I have. This is cinnamon, made from cinnamon bark, not from the powder, so it's not that intense flavour. This one is vanilla, made from fresh vanilla pods. Both of them are a delicious fragrant syrup that you pour over the fish wellers before you eat them. So now I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, to make the fish wellers, what you need is a very simple dough. The dough is not difficult to make, but I'm going to show you in detail how it works because this is the most important part of it, the actual central part of the dessert. So what you need is, you need an egg and you need flour, um, orange flour water, olive oil, a little bit of ordinary water and a tiny bit of salt. So here I'm going to do, I'm going to actually show you how you make the dough. You start whisking up the egg and you add the orange flour water and the oil. I've already measured them out and you will have all the details on your recipe and some ordinary cold water. So whisk it all up and then just throw in all the flour, all at once. It can go gently like that, all done. So then keep mixing it around and you want to keep stirring until the sticky part is no longer just in the middle, but the whole thing is all getting incorporated. And at that stage, you are going to need to use your hands because all cooking really involves using hands. So there we are, we've nearly got it ready. So I would recommend that you actually take a tiny bit of flour onto your hands and then you can start to scrape the dough out of the bowl like that and then put it onto your worktop. And then what we need to do is continue. I know you can't see this, but you are going to see it in a minute. You're going to continue just with a little bit of flour, just to make it into a nice ball that is rollable. So this is what you do. It's not a difficult thing, but it's important to get all the cracks out of it, because by the time you start rolling it, you don't want them to be any many cracks. But do take care not to add too much flour, because if you do, then it'll be a bit too solid. So I'm going to set aside that bit of dough and I'm going to show you one that I have already made. Uh, dough making is quite messy and so it does require a little bit of hand washing in the middle. So let's have a go with that. Now I'm going to show you what the dough is going to be like once you start rolling it out. And there it is. And I've done it into a sort of rough rectangle, but I'm going to show you properly in a moment how to deal with it and how it turns into these wonderful coils. But before I do that, I'm going to show you how to make one of the syrups that go with it. I think I told you at the beginning that you have a choice of vanilla or cinnamon. And I'm going to show you the cinnamon one first. And this is the one I've already made and it's in a saucepan and it's got cinnamon bark in it. This is cinnamon bark, it's all otherwise called cinnamon sticks. And so what you do is you put sugar and water into a pan and you bring it to the boil. Then you throw in these pieces of cinnamon bark and you boil it and boil it for about seven minutes, not too fiercely, but just so it's at a nice bubble. And what will happen is it will turn into a complete liquid. You won't see any sugar in it, 
my gosh, has it got a lot in it. And there it is. And you're going to heat this syrup up later and pour it over the finished feijoadas. So the next step is rolling out the pastry and actually frying it. Now we've got to the stage where I'm going to roll out the pastry and fry it. And I have the oil heating and it's on quite a high heat and I have already actually made two or three of them. So it cooled down and now it's heating up again. Now the way to tell if it's ready or not is that you drop a tiny little bit of the dough into it and if it sizzles it's ready. But what I'm going to start showing you is the rolling out of the dough. You may wonder what I'm doing with a bit of cling film and this is the whole point of the cling film. To stop the flour sticking or the pastry sticking to the rolling pin if you want to make it thin because I'm rolling out this nice piece that we did before and trying to get it thinner than it was. The best way of doing it is to do it over a bit of cling film and then that just lifts up and you've got a nice piece of pastry without all sticking to the rolling pin. So I'm going to do it once more just to roll it along. It will need a little bit of help getting it up from the paper that I've got on, but it's almost ready to start cutting it. So meanwhile, I'm going to drop a little bit of the dough into the frying pan and it's starting to sizzle straight away. So that means that they're ready. So it's coming straight up to the top. That means it's fine. I'm going to turn it down a tiny bit and now we are ready to go. So I'm going to take this cutter and we're going to make strips. And it's very easy. You just discard the bits you're not using and you run it down and you lift it up and it should all be coming up nicely. Let's see if we can release it from the paper very well. And here it is, ready to go. So I'll show you the first one. Here it is, the strip of pastry. You slide the fork into it, just like that, and you dip it into the oil. And you can hear it sizzling probably. And as you leave it, the first outside layer starts to get hot and fold around. And then you turn it and turn it with the fork. And as you do it, it makes it into a nice coil. There it goes. That one is ready to go. So let's do another one. So we roll the rolling object over the dough into many pieces and you keep going, putting them into the oil. Now you can see that I'm just running the palette knife underneath. It's very important to have a palette knife for something like this. And here is your fork and you just put it in, holding the uncooked bit up, and wait till it's cooked at the bottom and keep turning the fork round and round as you do it. It's not an easy thing and sometimes little bits fall off at the edges, but don't worry about that because you can make them very neat and very small, or you can make them, as I call, a little bit wild so that they are bigger. As soon as they start to get done, you should turn them over. Here is the little bit of dough that I put to try, and this one is nearly ready. So I'm going to get the next one ready to go in, and keep frying, I'm gonna put this one in. I'm using just a large fork. You can use any fork you like. You can also use a very long-handled fork, but the most important thing is to keep your hands well away from the oil because you can see that it is bubbling, bubbling hot, really, really hot. And so you do need to be very careful. So here I'm going to take the first one out and you can see that was the first one we did. There it is. And you drain it immediately onto kitchen paper. And if the next one is nearly done, you can see they should be a golden colour. They should not be uh, very pale but you definitely don't want them to be dark brown. So I'm going to carry on doing this. I've got about a litre of oil cooking here. It's not olive oil, this is just sunflower oil. Uh, the very simplest, easiest oil to have. And you don't want a flavoured oil for this because you're going to have flavouring afterwards. And there is another one. 
And I won't do all of them because we've got the hang of it now. I'll just do one more and you can see how it's going. And if they break off, don't worry, just try again and make another one. And this lot will make quite a few. I have been using half the recipe for the demonstration. So I would actually make the whole recipe and you will get out of it uh, 12 or more out of a whole lot. I should think maybe more like 18 small ones. And so there we've got four of them frying in there. And I'm going to lift out the ones that are done, lift them up carefully and drain the oil off. You definitely don't want them to be too oily. And we'll just turn that one and we'll wash it. And there is a little bit more, but I shall do those later because you don't want to see somebody doing it over and over again. What I'm hoping is you're going to do it yourself. But I did want to tell you something about the vanilla syrup. I told you before about the cinnamon syrup here. In a similar saucepan, small saucepan, same amount of sugar, and instead of cinnamon, you use fresh vanilla pods. These are amazing things. They have the most lovely smell. And this is a vanilla pod from Madagascar. I'm going to pause one moment here while I just lift one of these out because unfortunately they can't wait. So if you're talking or you're doing something else, I'm afraid these have to come first. So we'll just turn that last one over and I'll continue telling you about vanilla pods. Inside the vanilla pod is the little white dots. This has got sugar on it and you may not be able to see, but if you run the knife down, you may be able to see that little dots of vanilla are falling out from the centre. And this is the absolute best part of it. And here it is, you can see it on the knife, you can see little black dots. And that is what makes the sugar so gorgeous. And if you don't use it in the syrup, which you may choose not to if you want to have the vanilla one, the cinnamon one, you can always use vanilla sugar in any kind of baking. It's a wonderful thing to use because it's so much nicer than what they call vanilla extract, which you buy in little bottles. So I wouldn't recommend those, but I would definitely recommend you buy yourself some vanilla pods. So there it is. Now they're all done. So if it's something that you fancy, please give it a go. And, um, do ask me if there's anything you want to know that I can help you with. But meanwhile, I strongly recommend that you try and give your guests or yourselves fish wellers.